what makes Zero Escape unique? A small little DS title known as Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors was released in 2010. It told the story of nine seemingly strangers who were brought together into a little game known as the Nonary Game. This game is not for the faint of heart. Together they must solve puzzles and find their way to the exit. Or else. It then garnered a sequel for the 3DS in 2012 known as Virtue's Last Reward, which followed a similar premise and continued the story of its predecessor, which was re-released at the time to commemorate the occasion. This is the Zero Escape series, and after a huge rush and called popularity, fans have been anxiously awaiting a third game in the series. The games are loved for having one of the most mesmerizing stories in video games, one that truly enthralls the player into the settings, characters, and dialogue. Critically acclaimed, saying that it's thought-provoking would be an understatement to say the least. With the looks of a third and final installment finally on the horizon, rabid fans have been in an uproar trying to decipher the clues that writer Kotaro Uchikoshi and publisher Axis Games have been releasing to the fans with the hashtag for infinity. What makes the Zero Escape series unique is how it takes advantage of all the tools at its disposal to push the boundaries of a visual novel. Let's begin. The Nonary Game, which is the focal point of the series, is a game of life and death. In 999, the nine characters are trapped on a sinking ship, and must find a door marked with a number 9 to escape. In VLR, the nine characters are trapped in a warehouse with the same goal. In both games, the characters had been abducted by an unknown gas mask wearing kidnapper known as Zero, who is also the architect behind these maniacal games. Similarly to the Saw movie franchise, it makes for an intriguing villain in a horror scenario. Zero's reasoning for making this game, picking these specific people, and putting their lives in danger is a mystery. But he must have his reasons, right? Being trapped with strangers for someone's sick game could drive many into madness. In Virtue's Last Reward, it can even be advantageous to want to murder your comrades due to a game that's based on the prisoner's dilemma, a philosophical scenario that questions trust and human desire. This powerful enactment of philosophical questions and scenarios are symbolized in the Zero Escape series beautifully, digging into the ideas of Schrodinger's cat, the Chinese room, and the Monty Hall problem. All of this builds a captivating scenario that's exciting to read from beginning to its multiple endings. What pairs with this scenario perfectly is the character development. Being surrounded by these strangers would make anyone feel uncomfortable. Some come off as cold and scheming, others seem timid and innocent, and some you just feel like you can trust. As you play through the games, you constantly ponder over the dialogue, thinking about what's actively happening. With the many different endings, the dialogue is dynamic with your choices throughout the game. No doubt some characters will die on certain paths, which poses the question, would you still trust the others? We know one of them is likely a murderer. Now this game is full of dialogue. Even though you are forced into the role of either Junpei or Sigma in 999 and VLR respectively, the game fully understands the player's own thoughts in its narrative. Junpei and Sigma rarely have internal dialogue, and even the narrator doesn't bother to mention the thoughts of the other characters. This narrative is perfect for a visual novel, letting the players themselves have to remember everything that's happened in order to draw their own conclusions. It's something that makes the plot twists so much more thrilling. You really don't foresee what's going to happen, but yet it's been on your mind since the beginning of the game. In subsequent playthroughs, early dialogue fully alludes to the truth, but yet you hadn't noticed it before. This beautiful story and dialogue isn't just well written, it is well presented. Composer Shinji Hosoe wrote memorable themes for the game that fully bring out the plot gripping dialogue. Tracks like Chillin' Rigor, Trepidation, and Tinderbox aren't just beautiful pieces of music, they're scary and goosebump forming just to listen to. Beautiful use of piano, ambient noise, and industrial metallic sounds make it feel less than a soundtrack and more of a full on film score, making for a wonderful experience for any gamer who can appreciate fantastic writing. The gameplay in the series is just basic puzzle solving. Although the puzzles are well designed, they're not particularly special in any way. 90% of this game is text, and it's crazy to imagine that a game with such imbalance between game and story has been loved so much by fans. With captivating characters, a story that leaves players asking constant questions, and presentation that holds up to its horror motif, Zero Escape is a must-play series for any fan of visual novels. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that a good story can be recognized within the confines of a video game. It's a series that thrives on fear, trust, and the human condition, something that visual novels have never been known for. That is what makes Zero Escape unique.
I love this series. Hopefully next week we'll receive some news on the third and final Zero Escape title, because if all this buildup was for something else, there's gonna be a pretty angry fan base on their hands. <laughs> Oh boy. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos that discuss what makes any video game stand out. Thanks for watching.